cords. I bet you have a bunch of these. I know I do. I don't even know what most of these things charge. Old cell phones. I don't get rid of them because I'm kind of afraid that at some point I'm going to need some of these. So the question is, how do we charge things when we're traveling? My sons love to go into this technology drawer of dead things from the past and pull out things like an old cell phone and say, hey mom, the 90s are calling you. Al Gore wants to explain global warming. You know, it's funny, but back in the 90s, traveling was so much easier. We didn't have all of these electronics. I'm just looking at what I'm bringing on my next trip. I've got a little kind of GoPro thing. I've got this camera that's recording right now. I've got battery packs. I've got my phone. I've got so many different things that I'm supposed to charge. How can I keep track of it and how can I plug it all in? Now, the first question most people ask when they're thinking about plugging in electronics in Europe is, is it safe? Do I need a current converter? Now, here's the thing. In the United States, our current is different. We have a different amount of electricity that goes through those sockets than they do in Europe. So in the past, in the 90s, when I was a student traveling, we had to be very careful. We couldn't plug in anything we wanted to. We had to get a little box that would make that little thing, whatever it was, hair dryer, curling iron, something like that, convert to the local energy of whatever country that we were in. That is not something we need necessarily anymore. Most electronics have that integral to their actual structure. So your cell phone, for example, I have my, my iPhone right here. When I'm traveling abroad, I just plug it into its regular charging kind of cord here, and then I put a base and I plug it into the wall and it charges just fine. So what I'm gonna to do today is give you some ideas about how you can adapt your electronics to plugging in in a hotel room. So the first problem is because we travel with so many electronics these days, we've caught up to that, but people in other countries have not caught up to how many sockets you need, how many outlets. And so many times when I travel, I go into a hotel room and maybe there's one outlet and that outlet very well could be on the other side of the room, somewhere very inconvenient. And I don't know about you, but I like to have my cell phone nearby because I use it as my alarm clock also. So how do we solve this problem, especially when you're traveling with others? My children, for example, when I travel with them, oh my goodness, they have so many electronics also. So we need way more than we used to. Now it used to kind of be simple. If you had something that you wanted to plug in, you took the American plug and you plugged it in to something like this. Uh, I have several different examples here. It was all pretty, pretty simple that way. The most basic one is something that you can get right now. And this is very, very simple. If you just want to solve it in an easy way, you can see it's got the two plug slot. Now this is a great adapter and very easy if you only have two prongs. Now, for example, the base to my Apple laptop, this works just fine. I can plug this directly into the wall anywhere in Europe and it usually works just fine. Um, the only thing is that this is a very heavy base, you see, and it kind of eventually falls out or flops over. So uh, when you choose whatever adapter you want, choose one that's going to be able to hold up whatever you have plugged in there. Um, this one here is a little bit better. Actually, my favorite one is this one here. A couple things about plugging stuff into the walls abroad, sometimes, especially in Europe, the actual place that the plugs go is deep. So sometimes you need something that is extra deep like this so it can go into the wall so it can actually make contact. This one's a little bit beefier and it works just like that. And you plug it into the wall and away you go. Now, the problem with all of these is that it can take one thing. Also, I just wanted to mention that there are so many different types, but the two principal types, if you're traveling, especially in Europe, but also Asia as well, this is the, the common one that is accepted in most places in the world. This one here, which is a little odd, is accepted in Great Britain. So be sure if you're going to London to England that you pick up one of these. You can even just buy it when you arrive and you can get it uh, at any boots or pharmacy or something like that. And whatever country you're going to, if they have a socket that doesn't work, you can always go to the newsstand, the 7-Eleven, something like that, and they'll usually have one. So um, when, we have, when we're looking at these adapters and things that we have to plug in, just remember when you're packing to take a charging cord for each different kind of thing that you're bringing. So I'm gonna give you an example here. Um, of all the things that I own, there are actually tons and tons of different kinds of cords. I'm confused already, look at all these cords. Number one, lightning connector, that is for your Apple phone. 
Number two, USB, little baby mini USB. And that one is flat on the bottom and then arced around the sides. And then the newest one, which is USB-C, which is a long flat oval. This is the one that's becoming more and more popular, but you may not even have electronics yet with this adapter, but it's coming. So you wanna be kind of prepared for that. The next thing is how do you choose charging cords? Now this is a little cheap one from Apple. Uh, it's quite short and I think it costs just a few dollars. The problem I see with this is twofold. One, look how skinny this is. It's very flimsy. And not only that, it's really short. Most of the time when you find an outlet that actually works in Europe or elsewhere, uh, that is going to be not anywhere close to where you actually want to be. So it's smart to buy charging cords that are quite long. As an example, this is a very well-worn charging cord that I bought for a phone. It's six feet long, and I recommend six feet long for sure. And if you have a look at the beefiness of these cables, you'll see that there's a difference. So this is a very well-worn one, but you see it has this sort of mesh on the outside and the, the cable is much thicker. I would recommend getting something beefier like this. There's lots of good choices and I have some suggestions on my blog. If you go um, into the links on this video, you'll see, and uh, just find something that actually has kind of a heavy duty capability because when you're out and you're you know traveling a lot, you're going to mess these up. This is the first thing that's gonna break because where they break, they fail as this one here has failed right here and then they fail on the other end as well, you can see. So be sure that when you choose one, you get one that has uh, usually a rubber coated base here and here and something that has a really thick cord. Those are ones that are going to last you longer than this one did, I should hope, and much longer than this little flimsy one did. So now that we've figured out which cords to buy, minimum six foot length for your phone, then how do we plug it in? Well, like I said, I've got two kids that I travel with, so we're gonna need to have multiple outlets. Now, if you're lucky, you have somebody in your life who is clever. I have somebody, had somebody in my life who was clever who created this, which is the European base attached to an American power strip. Now, this was homemade. Don't think I recommend that, but it worked. The other thing you can do is you can get your own power strip from home. This one here is uh, not surge protected, so I wouldn't recommend it. Get one that is surge protected. And then you can find one of these adapters that goes on the end. And you see this is three prongs, so you need to choose a three pronged adapter to go with it. And there you go. This is ready to be plugged in and you can power one, two, three, four, five, six different things. Now, the only thing is that you're going to need to have a base for each of those things you charge, plus your outlet that goes into the USB port. So this is a solution. I like it because look at the length of this. So if there is a really awkward outlet somewhere, you have a lot of options. Now, another option, another way to attack this is to get one of these power bases. This power base has four USB ports, plus it's got three plugs, and it also, like this, came with a tray that you can put on top. So I have one here that I use all the time at home. This also has surge protection in it, so if something happens, you plug in the wrong thing, it'll cut it before it kills the power in the entire building. So this is a really good option here as well, um, but I actually have another suggestion for you. Uh, there are these handy dandy new ones, and this is what I am recommending right now. You can get these on Amazon. Again, the links are on my blog. They have ones that have an outlet, a USB, and a USB-C. Considering that USB-C is becoming really the predominant uh, connection in, as we progress into the future, this is a really good idea. The one that I bought recently had one, two, three, four of those ports, one of these, and two outlets. Uh, so that's enough to power just about anything. The only problem is that if you have it in an awkward location, you're still gonna have an issue. So that's why I really recommend finding cords for your phones or your electronics that are really, really long. So basically that's the idea. Find yourself a nice base with many USB ports, many plugs, and then figure out how to plug it into the wall. Uh, my last tip would be that uh, when you're traveling, try really hard to pack light, but don't skimp on the battery packs and the cords because nothing's gonna be a bigger bummer than not being able to charge your phone when you're traveling. So I hope these tips help. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and please look at my blog also for more packing tips. Uh, I'm a tour guide and a travel writer and I've been doing this for more than 20 years, so I hope these tips will help you. Go to my blog at adventureswithsarah.net for information on my upcoming tours and support me on Patreon. Grazie.